Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. This is the SpongeBob Conspiracy number five, the Neptune Theory. So, guys, we reacted to the fourth one last time. So, let's get into this one. So, the continuity with King Neptune is a bit of a mess. There are two different King Neptunes. There's a King Poseidon. There's three different royal palaces. Two of them are called the City of Atlantis, but there's also a third unrelated City of Atlantis. It's confusing to say the least. But there is actually a way to explain how all of this is intentional and connects together. This is a story of power, deception, and betrayal. This is the Neptune Theory. Thank you, Alex Baldwin. That was probably nothing. There's no tension, the pacing is slow, it fundamentally fails as a film. Alex, go back to making Spongebob theory videos, no one wants to see your awful horror films. I've been your host, one and only cynical critic, and remember to stay cynical. I'll watch them. See you later. <laughs> Number five. And we're back! What's up? I'm your host, Alex, the Spongebob guy, back with another Spongebob conspiracy. I've said it before, but the overwhelming support for these videos is insane, so I'd be stupid not to make more. I mean, everyone loves them, right? Hello, fellow truth seekers, it's Conspiracy Carl here. Welcome back to The Awakening. I have been awakened myself to the immense lies of this person right here. This liar, Alex Bale. Well, almost everyone. So I showed a bit of this conspiracy guy's reaction in my last video, and apparently he didn't like that, so now he's claiming that I'm part of some giant Illuminati conspiracy. Somebody looks like they're a puppet for the Illuminati. Yes, you, you sir, have been inserting secret messages into your videos. Evil. Evil lurks there, people. It's honestly really funny. You, sh you should check him out. Anyways, uh -huh. let's get into the theory. Is what I would say if I wasn't sponsored. Hey, uh -huh. Alex. How do I make a cool YouTube film video like you? Well, it's easy. You just gotta learn to edit, record dialogue, write a script, use camera and lights, learn Photoshop and VFX. Oh. How the heck am I gonna learn to do all that? All you gotta do is go to Skillshare. Skillshare! Skillshare is an online learning platform that offers thousands of different classes where you can learn filmmaking, editing, Photoshop, and pretty much anything. And you can watch all of Skillshare's videos without any annoying ads interrupting. Boy, I sure hate when that happens. I'm thinking about getting into bird watching, so I'm taking bird identification for beginners. That bird has a conical shaped bill. Thank you, Alfred Curling. The first thousand people uh -huh. to go to the link in the description will get their first month free. Just be careful not to learn too much. Wow, this is so great. I'm learning so much. That's that's maybe too much. That's <laughs> That's a northern royal flycatcher. You can tell by its fan-like crest and long bill. Now on to the theory. Nice. King Neptune is the ruler of the seven seas and the Roman god of the ocean. If you yep. watch my evolution theory, you know there's also a good chance he's the reason why fish in Bikini Bottom are so evolved and able to- King Neptune. When King Neptune was a little Neptune, his mother set him adrift in a river. As he floated along, a radioactive meteor fell to earth. An alien appeared and anointed the infant with super Neptune fluid. Is that really the origin of King Neptune? Um, sure. So King Neptune was abandoned as a baby and then given his powers by aliens. But SpongeBob is holding an upside down comic book, so it feels a lot like something he just made up. And SpongeBob is not the most reliable narrator. Unless there's something in the story that we can definitively prove, I don't think we can use it for a theory. Like, do you really expect me to believe that Neptune got his powers from aliens? I mean, we've never even seen aliens in the show before. Except, we have. And they just so happen to also live in a city called Atlantis. See Oh. 
Season 5, Episode 12, Atlantis Square Pantis, we see another completely different Atlantis, the lost city of Atlantis, a city that's home to a race of aliens. The Atlantean aliens traveled billions of light years to come to this planet and build their city. For reasons unknown, this great city disappeared one day, but no ruins were ever found. All the inventions you take for granted were given to us by the Atlanteans. They were a peaceful race of aliens who shared their technology, but then mysteriously disappeared for some reason. And and take a guess what we find when we look inside of that city. A massive sculpture of King Neptune. That story about aliens giving Neptune his powers doesn't sound so far-fetched now, does it? And that's not all we find. Neptune's Ascension, the only surviving painting from the great lost city of Atlantis. A painting created by the Atlanteans called Neptune's Ascension, aka Neptune ascending to his god status by being given powers by the Atlantean aliens. The story is definitely referencing this. There are too many connections for this to be a coincidence. So even though it's being told by Spongebob and details like the aliens appearance are wrong, the story itself is probably based on truth. And there's also a lot of evidence to support the idea that Neptune was abandoned as a baby. In Clash of Triton, Neptune is watching a soap opera in his bedroom and gets upset when his wife turns it off. Oh, Neptune, surely this isn't the behavior befitting a king, doing nothing but watching daytime television. Wait! Rochelle was just about to meet her biological parents! In the soap opera, Rochelle was just about to meet her biological parents. Maybe the real reason why Neptune's so invested in the soap opera is because he's never met his biological parents either. There's even tissues on the table next to him as if he's been crying. And the idea that Neptune was abandoned as a baby works perfectly with the mythology in the show. Neptune is the Roman god of the sea, but he is the only reference to Roman mythology in the show. Everything else we see is from Greek mythology. In the episode Tried at Trouble, we see a Greek chorus. Behold, we are the Greek chorus. We narrate this epic tale. Neptune once mentioned Zeus, the Greek god of thunder. So I say, look, Zeus, either you come up with more money or Neptune walks. He also mentions Apollo, the Greek god of the sun. Now behold, my beloved home of Atlantis. A prize worthy of Apollo. Even in the city of Atlantis where Neptune lives, there's a building named the Poseidon, clearly named after Poseidon. So Neptune is clearly the outsider here, which is why he was abandoned as a baby. But if the sea is actually ruled by Greek mythology, then Poseidon should be the true heir to the throne. Why is Neptune the king in the show? Because after Neptune was given his god powers by aliens, he returned to Atlantis and stole the throne from Poseidon. This would explain why there's so much confusion over who the real king is. Neptune stirred up quite a gale tonight. Everyone knows Poseidon is ruler of the undersea. Legally, Poseidon should be the king, but Neptune yeah. took it by force. And that's not all he took from Poseidon. Neptune's wife, Queen Amphitrite, is the goddess of the sea. The Greek goddess of the sea, aka the wife of Poseidon. God damn, Neptune stole his wife and his throne. Uh -huh. That is cold. And eventually, everyone did recognize Neptune as the rightful king. The pink fish who seemed adamant about Poseidon being the king completely changes her mind one season later in Clash of Triton. <laughs> Wait a minute, King Neptune is coming here? Oh, I'm a huge fan of the royal family. I just love everything they do. And that is the real story of King Neptune. The reason why Poseidon is king in the third movie is probably because in that timeline, Neptune was never given his god powers, so he never stole the throne from Poseidon. Although, seeing as how Poseidon turned Atlantis into a big casino cash grab city, maybe it's a good thing Neptune took over. The lost city of Atlantic City. And that is the Neptune theory. That was a tough one, but we are finally done. See you next time, guys. Wait, why is Poseidon City called the Lost City of Atlantic City? The Lost City of Atlantic City. I mean, the Atlantic City Park makes sense. That's a reference to the real-life Atlantic City, but why is it called the Lost City? There is nothing lost about the city. It seems like everyone's easily able to find it. The uh -huh. only other reference to a lost city of Atlantis is the one with the aliens that gave Neptune his powers. Uh -huh. Nope. Nope, I, I, I don't care. I'm done with this theory. I don't need to answer every single little question. I am 100% done. <laughs>
Alright, here we go. So we know before the Atlantean aliens mysteriously disappeared, they shared their technology with the creatures of the sea. I think the self-proclaimed gods of the sea got their technology, like tridents and their other weapons, from the Atlantean aliens. In fact, the Atlantean guards even use golden tridents as their weapons. That's why the gods named their city Atlantis, to pay tribute to the Atlanteans that gave them their technology. But all of that changed yeah. when Poseidon became king of the sea. He betrayed the Atlanteans and used their own weapons against them to conquer their home and turn it into a casino city. That's why Poseidon City is called the Lost City, even though it's not lost. It's referencing the Atlantean city that was conquered by Poseidon. And the reason why the Atlanteans gave god powers to some random abandoned baby in the main timeline was so that Neptune could take the throne from Poseidon and prevent him from conquering the alien city. And the reason why the Atlantean city mysteriously disappeared was because they hid it so no one could ever try and conquer them again. And that is the Neptune theory. I am done. That's good. <sighs> okay, that's uh, it's another one done. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Alex. We've got more on the way. I'll see you next time. That's hey, cool. listen, that that theory was awesome. You know, I don't know how you keep coming up with these, but I mean, they're great. And, and listen, you were you were totally right. You know, the people want SpongeBob theories, so who am I to ignore them? So, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, hello? Got the got the meat for you. All right, listen. If we're gonna work on this, then we need to work on our communication skills because this this creepy quiet act it's getting old. in his head. Why, why are you on my ceiling? My boy, you have done well. But if we are to continue our work, I will require something more. Guy. Hey, thank you guys for watching. Smash like. That's Alex Baldwin for you guys. Peace.